Welcome back to Event and Tech Show 2020. Our final guest speaker for today is Pascal from Field Drive. Pascal Lagadec has over 20 years of international experience in various sales and business development roles within the tech, so tech sector. Consumer electronics, traditional IT, telecoms, mobile apps, events technology, etc. Totally fluent in several European languages, culturally aware and comfortable within complex sales environments. In his current role, he drives the expansion of Field Drive as the main global on-site event technology supplier within the events industry. He has been involved in events throughout his career and has a passion for customer experience, enhancing, enhancing attendee journeys and delivering value to increase engagement. He lives at the foot of the Alps in France near Geneva as two children aged 17 and 16, enjoys tennis, football, jogging, snowboarding. Whenever time allows, he rides his mountain bike and he is also a keen rock music drama. Pascal sharing is titled COVID-19 Life Event Solutions. A new normal for events requires solutions that allow organizers to comply with a set of fast developing regulations and safety measures that differ by region and type of event. Our vast experience in crowd management, access control and facial recognition has allowed us to develop a portfolio of technology solutions that we call COVID safe event solutions. This framework encompasses the complete online and physical user journey, starting from careful considerations in event planning and registration. To the on-site event assess, check-in, show floor, and the session activities all the way through to exiting the event. At this point in the user journey, Field Drive offers new and concrete ways to ensure the safe delivery of events by implementing, among others, hygiene stations, assess control, crowd management, social distancing tools, engagement monitoring, visitor analytics platforms, and much more. May we welcome Pascal. Hello, welcome to this presentation on COVID safe event solutions. My name is Pascal Legadec and I run the sales and business development at Field Drive. So let me start by introducing Field Drive and telling you a little bit about what we do. Field Drive is a global on-site event technology provider. The topic of physical on-site events is a difficult one today. With the COVID virus, we have come to terms with a change that is taking place in the life of physical events. And this is what we are going to talk about today. Field Drive is a global supplier that operates worldwide that focuses on the on-site experience of attendees and serves clients across associations, corporate clients, event agencies, PCOs, and many more. We operate globally and also are compatible with any registration platforms, which means that when clients are looking for an on-site solution for greeting their attendees, printing their badges, and tracking what is taking place at their events, they reach out to Field Drive because we can provide a set of solutions that are similar across the globe, irrespective of the geography. Our services focus on, firstly, data integration. That means that we integrate with the data environment of our clients' events. For example, integrations with platforms like Cvent, Aventry, Events Air, and many others is core to our business. It actually means that we have access to our clients' data or attendee data to be specific, so that we may then on-site create the experience that they would like so that we can greet their participants in the best manner. This allows us to have flexibility in the data that we print on attendees' badges and also ensures that we have a lot of flexibility in variations to create different badge types depending on attendee categories, on food preferences, on their specific agenda for the event as opposed to a standard global agenda for everyone. So we make badges 
that are very personalized. And that is thanks to the data integrations that we have with the Field Drive platform. So data transfers seamlessly from the source registration platform to Field Drive and back so that we may report back on the status of each attendee as they arrive at the event. So if data integration allows, allows us to print badges and set the scene for the best possible welcome of attendees on site with batch printers in full colors and various ranges of equipment, which we'll show you in a second. Another core component of what we do is around tracking and tracing visitors at the event. From lead retrieval for exhibitors and sponsors to session scanning and controlling the access to different rooms and different sessions, this is also core to what we do and is a prolongment of the uh, greeting and the welcome of participants as they arrive. Throughout the event, over the day and multiple days, we will be tracking what attendees do, uh, allowing exhibitors to scan and generate leads from scanning badges and barcodes. And all of that allows us to generate a set of reporting and data that is useful for our clients to uh, analyze and uh, take some learnings from what has taken place at their events. And these core insights are possible through the data integration that allows us to um, uh, track participants throughout the events. Now, if this is the core of what we do, things have changed since the beginning of this year. Through the advent of the coronavirus, uh, we have developed two additional components to our core services. First and foremost, and that's what we'll be talking about today, is the COVID safe event solutions. We've actually created a framework within which we have identified solutions for creating a safe physical experience for people when they come back to physical events. Additionally to that, however, in the transition phase, most of our clients have been looking for a virtual or hybrid solution for continuing to remain engaged with their audience and talk to their participants. And in that context, we are supporting them by uh, making the right choices, both in terms of platforms, in terms of features, in terms of event format that they'd like to proceed with. As a consulting service, we are best positioned to provide them with agnostic advice as to which platform is best to use and also how to best stage a virtual event program and also uh, the combination of various features from Q&A, live polling, to breakout rooms and engagement facilities for their attendees. As I mentioned, Field Drive operates globally. We have a footprint that covers most continents around the globe and all the green dots here outline where we are physically present. Uh, we are headquartered in Brussels in Europe, uh, which allows us to be close to all key European um, event locations. Yet we also have a footprint in North America where we run a substantial number of events throughout the year, whether it's Philadelphia on the East Coast, Phoenix closer to the West Coast, and also Toronto for Canada. We have physical equipment and staff present in all of these locations. And beyond that, we have partners who prolong our presence through um, uh, our uh, situations in South Africa, in various parts of Europe, in Spain, in Germany, and also in the Middle East. In Singapore, Field Drive also has a physical hub from which we run all of our clients' events in the Asian region. And in orange on this little map, you can see where we are going to be next, whether it's Latin America, China, Japan, where we've already run a few events, and also in Australasia with physical presence in Melbourne, which is in the making. Our track record is that we've obviously operated in numerous countries. We've run numerous events across those countries this past year. We have now 11 physical presence around the globe, and we've been able to badge or equip delegates with badges uh, over half a million in, in 2019. And all of our team members are motivated field drivers who physically go on site of the event, but also spend a lot of time in advance in preparing the events with our clients by project managing their event and providing numerous advice on how to make 
a physical experience the most um, pleasant one for participants. If the core of what we do is printing badges in full color live, which prevents having to pre-print badges, but also safeguards the ability to customize and print badges in, um, in the latest fashion, because data is always up to date, we have the ability to support different formats. We obviously favor sustainable biodegradable material. Uh, more and more of our clients are opting for this option and it's also the best way to provide full flexibility and leverage the color printing facility that Field Drive features as part of their equipment. It's a great way for supporting sponsors. In fact, sponsor messaging can be physically present on different badges in different formats for different attendee categories and therefore for our clients multiplies um, sponsorship opportunities. Physically, our solutions fit literally every event environment. We have a modular kiosk design which features branding opportunities, prints in full color, can be standalone and works either offline or online. So if an event has issues with internet, we can still continue to operate irrespective of, um, of internet situation. Prevents queues and obviously frustrations with your attendees. These kiosks can be also modular and be set up in a tabletop format in a full registration kiosk with digital signage and branding, as well as a premium kiosk, which is in a wooden bamboo style design, which is sturdy and also provides AI experiences for participants with an assistant. Our clients, as I mentioned earlier, span the whole spectrum of event planners from associations to PCOs, conference organizers, event agencies, and corporate clients, we provide a great on-site experience, and this is what our clients come to see us for. Yet all of those clients are today frustrated because their planned event have either been postponed, canceled, and they're obviously skipping to the next edition of their events. A lot of these clients do have multiple events throughout the year physically and they have in this current time looked at hybrid or even virtual formats to prolong and continue the um, engagement of their communities throughout uh, this period to conclude the introduction on field drive um, i think what stands us apart is the net promoter score or the likelihood of clients to work with us again whatever the situation or whatever the challenges that our clients are facing we make a point in trying to support them throughout the whole experience of planning the event going through the physical experience on site and also post event reconciling data for reporting analysis our management team has over 50 experience across events and therefore in this particular crucial time of the COVID environment it's crucial to have that experience to keep a cool head and have a great and compelling approach to devising new solutions, new formats, and new COVID compatible physical experience for events on site. And so this is what I would like to engage with you on today. Right from the outset, in February, when things started to get uh, critical, the whole team here has sat down and thought through the whole physical experience when events were to come back. Obviously, there's still lots of uncertainties depending on regional regulations, the regional um, situations with the COVID virus. And so different geographies will have different approaches at different times. Yet all of them will have the same thought process to go through. What is going to be the visitor's experience throughout the event, right from planning, to accessing the venue and going through the experience on site right through to exiting the event. So thought processes going into planning, into hygiene, sanitation, into tracking, tracing, how we make touchless and frictionless interactions. All of these topics are key to this reflection and they also are core to our DNA at Field Drive and this is why we were one of the first to come up with a framework which kind of outlines how our clients can navigate through that uncertainty. 
And so the first thought process we've gone through is let's break down those different stages at the event from planning the event and registering online through to accessing the venue and how the physical mobility of that take place, takes place through to the actual process of checking in Natalie and issuing them with a badge and then through to the show floor or the event uh, days in terms of managing distancing and um, and um, uh, accessing the various rooms and contents, accessing sessions and uh, exiting the venues at the right times. These are all thought processes that we've broken down into various sections, which I would like to now go into. And so let's start with the planning of the event. Well, as most of you event planners have experienced now, physical events as they come back will require much more stringent planning. First of all, attendance might be limited uh, or constrained by venues, by local regulations, and therefore the ability for the event ecosystem of suppliers, whether it's the organizer, us as a supplier or partner, knowing when people are likely to arrive at the event is key. And so access to an event may be restrained physically to a specific time slot or a part of the day, it could be morning, afternoon, for accessing a particular venue or content of the day. This can be narrowed down to individual sessions. Once you have accessed the event, obviously participating in individual presentations, which may until now have been free to attend at any time, may require that we physically plan them in advance and book people in so that we may be able to mitigate crowd density at the right time throughout the process. And adding to that, the ability to leverage technology like facial recognition to provide a more touchless or frictionless experience on site is also a great thing to build into the online experience for participants. Last but not least, it's a very important stage to be very communicative around the COVID-19 policy for the event. It's a great way to outline to your potential clients what they can expect on site. But in return, it's also a great place to explain to them what we expect from them in return so that the event is actually a safe and profitable time spent at the event for each stakeholder. In fact, we have in the recent weeks experienced that um, participants are going the extra mile to um, contribute to that safe experience. Behaviors are now well uh, thought through or um, uh, experienced in terms of wearing masks, um, having a very thoughtful hygiene behavior at events with uh, washing hands, using sanitization gels, disinfectants. And so an educated audience for event professionals is all we need to stage a great event. The rest is actually the easy part for us, the supplier ecosystem, is to provide the tools on site for our attendees to use for running a successful physical event. Now we've talked about planning for the event and embarking our attendees on that journey right through, right from the online registration process. Let's see what takes place next when people actually go to physically attend the event. Now that stage is crucial because it's one of the filters to screen through and potentially uh, put aside potential visitors that could be um, uh, infected or at risk or maybe present symptoms that would indicate they may not be suitable for them to attend the event. So whether there are hygiene and sanitation tunnels like these which build in hand sanitizers temperature control systems and more or capacity control access tools like these or mobile um, thermometers like these and distancing um, uh, monitors that, that allow event organizers and security staff to monitor what's taking place at an event we have a whole array of existing tools and technologies that has come alive in the last few months. The question for event planners is to use the appropriate solution 
for their event. And not all events will want to accaparate or align all of the existing uh, COVID safe event solution. It's really a question about identifying what the density is or can be, uh, how we're going to be greeting guests and what we make available for them to um, uh, have a great experience on site. So again, accessing the venue is something that we will stage as a separate process to the actual checking in of attendees uh, and issuing of a badge and accessing the various rooms. And to that, let me specifically talk about um, um, the check-ins process. Attendees have planned their attendance in advance. They've accessed the venue, they've been checked, they've had the opportunity to sanitize and even screen their belongings to make sure that everything was germ-free. Now it's about checking them in, issuing them with a badge in the most frictionless possible manner. And here the topic of facial recognition is of relevance. What I will do now is show you a small little video that briefly outlines that the experience of facial recognition in the traditional world of field drive. Here's a small video that outlines the typical experience that people have when they upload a photo in advance and arrive at their event and have the check-in experience. They no longer need to talk to an operator to type in their names, and to get identified. All they have to do is actually stand in front of a webcam for their face to be instantaneously recognized and for their badge to be printed. Look at Andrew here, he's looking at the camera. He's been recognized and he is now picking up his badge, walking into the event. This is the experience that technology today allows and is a great way to leverage in times of COVID times. So if, if facial recognition is a technology that can be leveraged today, checking in has to be a central part of that experience. So inviting people to provide a photo from the outset during registration ensures that, that when they arrive at the event, they encounter a great experience at the point of issuance of their badge. It also is a great way to personalize their badge. As we mentioned here, the photo is featured on their badge and through the live color printing of their badge, we are able to distinctly make it obvious what time period their access to the event is granted for, who they physically are, which makes it easier for on-site staff to recognize and control, and is a great way also to personalize their badge to the nth degree. The agenda at a glance here will be my personal agenda for sessions that I have booked in advance through planning my events. And therefore on site, when I'm issued my badge, I have a tool which is really useful and that I can relate to at all times. So checking in with facial recognition, personalizing the photo badge, making it obvious to what time span the attendee is allowed to be at the event and combining this with gel dispensers in the queue management process through floor markings and digital signage uh, gel dispensers we have the right combination of educational tools and physical sanitization uh, methods so that in the queue management process we make this process as seamless as possible as seamless as possible and also as innovative as possible because facial recognition provides a great engaging experience. It's a very secure way of attendee, attending an event and is also the fastest way of checking in attendees. And if it's the fastest way of checking in attendees, in times where we want to minimize queues, this is the best way to achieve minimal friction when we greet attendees at physical events again. Now, beyond that, obviously, once people have accessed the event have checked in we want to know what they're about and what they're doing at the event and of course um, how we can help them respect the social distancing measures and also uh, give them additional tools to uh, keep those distancing uh, guidances and so there are different tools that are available from wearables to beacons that can be tied to the badge lanyard to wearable 
visual indicators that will blink when people come in too close proximity with each other. These are all tools that provide social distancing uh, uh, support. Let's not forget an event app, which is a great way of disseminating or notifying attendees when they are getting too close or uh, when they're in proximity of a dense uh, area of attendee, or indeed if their session is coming up so that they have sufficient time to plan moving over to the session rooms that they're supposed to have access to. On top of that, providing additional sanitization tool. We've mentioned the gel dispensers that everybody's now familiar with, but additionally, air purifiers that can be disseminated throughout the venue uh, and personalized signage that can be displayed based on the proximity of attendees with various digital signage is also a great way of making their life at events much more COVID compatible. Now let's talk about access. We've talked about accessing the venue and here we have a safe entry kiosk, as we call it, which has been specifically designed to control the density of attendees at events. It can be used for specific sessions within the event or for the event as a whole. And in fact, there is an interesting parallel to be made back in April when throughout Europe, stores were slowly a label allowed to uh, open up again, we've seen that um, some key retailers did call upon Field Drive to try and leverage our experience in physical flow management of participants at events. And this applies to physical retail stores as well. So I'm just going to run a small video that showcases how we at IKEA supported the reopening of the store by setting up a safe entry kiosk, which you see here in this video, which allows to control the in and outs of visitors or clients at a physical retail locations. So at any given time, we can ensure that the store is compliant with the maximum density of attendees and participants that can be physically attending or going to their retail stores. And so this works with two cameras, which monitors the incoming flux of people and the outward going, exiting of attendees. That provides a great way to provide digital customized signage with a traffic light type experience of green and red messaging throughout the, um, um, the physical footprints. This can be also connected to multiple entry points so that any physical location, whether it's now a retail store or in future an event location, the density is monitored at all times and we can ensure that our clients comply with local regulations if there are density uh, constraints for reopening or staging the events. Here is another example that we have um, been recently involved with, which is here locally in Europe. And it showcases how we can combine in physical retail stores, the control of the access with both the number of people that can attend at any given time, and also combine this with gates or turnstiles if required in order to better control the um, access to these physical events. And here this is modular, can be combined with RFID for physical uh, carts, for example, but it's a great way of showcasing how this applies to physical events when we stage them in the upcoming months. Again, another versatile way to provide tools that will make attendees feel safe and also um, provide organizers with tools that controls their environment. In the world of events, this will apply to accessing the venue, so second step in our process, but also will apply to sessions. For example, if free to attend breakout rooms or sessions are staged within the event days, these safe entry kiosks are a great way to ensure that the maximum capacity of uh, each room is not uh, uh, gone over. And therefore at any stage, we control a safe and hygienic environment for people to access. Now, once the event comes to a close for each attendee, or if my badge, for example, reminds me, or the app reminds me that my time slot 
is coming to an end and I'm invited to make room for the next participants in the afternoon, for example, or for sessions. Um, I have the ability to obviously be notified through the various beacons, the absolutions that we've mentioned, and also being able to capture the exit um, times for attendees provides additional insight on the attendance for our clients to uh, go through and analyze post-event. So I think what's paramount here is to really look at which of these solutions make sense for our clients. Not everything will make sense for everyone, depending on the event type, the event environment, and the local regulations. And therefore, to make it easier for our clients, we combine these tools in three different product sets. We have a COVID safe check-in set, which really focuses on the on-site arrival of attendees. It's combining facial recognition with gel dispensers for queue management, air dispensers, and floor marking. A second product set is really about the access of the venue or the event. And it's focused on our safe entry kiosk, combined with a thermographic and mask control system that can be put in place mobile at different locations, and is a complement to the check-in process. They can also be used independently irrespective of the event type. And thirdly, we have a product set that focuses on distance monitoring. So really it's a tool for event planners and organizers to keep an eye on what is taking place at the event once people have access. So it's a way to monitor the proximity of attendees and potentially dispatch staff or security personnel to remind people at this specific location to adhere to the social distancing measurements. Again, it's a tool to reassure, but also to intervene and give our event planners all the tools they require to uh, remain in control of their event. So, to conclude, I think it's important um, to go back to the initial thought process of um, COVID safe event solutions. Each event is different. Each geography will have their own uh, regulations. And so it's important to have a set of tools that can be independent, that can work in conjunction with each other, and that are modular so that our clients have the flexibility to mix and match what makes most sense for their events. That being said, in all environments, it's important to break down the various stages of the physical event participants so that we can better plan in advance, provide the right tool to access the venue, and on-site have the most touchless experience that participants can have. This will guarantee that people will feel confident of going back to physical events and go back to this social engagement that is core to the human behavior and is also core to the DNA of our, of our industry, the event industry. Thank you for taking part in this presentation. Um, I will now be available for questions and would love to be able to exchange with you on what this generates in terms of thought process and maybe queries you may have on any of these solutions. Thank you for your uh, participation. Thank you, Pascal, for your sharing on contactless solutions, which will certainly be useful in the new normal following the pandemic. I'm sure this is a great time to open up the floor for questions to stream in for Pascal. Catch him now while he is with us and he can answer your queries right here, right now. Click the Q&A button or scan this QR code to assess this session's pigeonhole live. Without further ado, let me pass the time back to Pascal. Hi, Pascal. <laughs> there thank you and indeed um, I've seen quite a few interesting questions coming in and let me take them one by one and trying to provide additional insights and information on those um, first and foremost the most relevant question here is relating to our facial recognition of service the question is what is the accuracy rate of facial recognition with the photo pre-uploaded versus the attendee actually arriving on site and being recognized well, first and foremost, the facial recognition technology is not new. 
It's a tried and tested technology that has been used in many industries worldwide from government security um, and access control uh, situations. It's only in recent years, in the last two or three years, that we've seen this uh, deployed in actual physical events. And so whilst it's new in events, it's actually a very mature technology. So the accuracy rate is actually 99.7% of positive accuracy and, and recognition. Now, to make this achievable, <coughs> what is important is that when people upload their photos at the time of registration, it's important that we give them sufficient guidance as to what this photo should be like, and also give them the opportunity to try and re-upload a photo if it is not appropriate or not good enough. And therefore, this process, we provide direct feedback to the attendee as to whether the photo is appropriate, whether it is um, recommended to try another photo or to remove, for example, glasses or hats or anything that the person might be wearing. So a portrait style photo like LinkedIn uh, uh, type photo is what is recommended. And again, from the outset, by providing good guidance on the type of photo that it is that we require, when they arrive on site, they have a 99.7% chance of being recognized, which is obviously a stellar accuracy rate. A second question relating to this um, is uh, what about the security of collecting photos of attendees? Well, it so happens that when we actually collect the photos, we don't keep them. What we do is we extract a biometric profile of the face structure of these attendees and we anonymize this and relate it to a registration number in the registration platform. Therefore, when the person arrives on site, we just actually try and replicate that extraction process because we didn't keep the photo. We only had a long piece of number, an algorithm that corresponds to a facial profile. We then create that same profile again and look in our systems for a match of that number. And only when we do see that match, do we display a message on the screen. Welcome, Andrew. Here's your badge printing for your event. And the biometric data itself is only kept in anonymized fashion for seven days following the last day of the event and everything is then deleted in compliance with GDPR regulations. So very accurate and also very secure and GDPR compliant. A further question that's come in is obviously it's generated quite some interest is where are field drive solutions and offerings available? Is it in all location? The answer is yes. The core of what we provide which is live color badge printing and facial recognition services is available in all of our location. We have physical equipment in all of these locations and also local staff that can support our clients. Some of the more specific COVID safe solutions will be deployed throughout those locations depending on when locally events do start to take place again. Again, it depends on all geographies, not all of the countries can stage large sized events at this current time, but it's only a matter of a few weeks until all of these COVID safe solutions are available. Now, here's a further question that has come in that actually relates slightly to the hybrid event format. It is, how do we ensure that virtual audiences are continually engaged during a hybrid event? Well, a hybrid event, if you think about it, has actually, it's the same event, but it's two different experiences, one behind your screen and one physically on site. And so it's about recognizing the needs of those two different experiences. Um, you know, the timings could be different. The, when you're on site, you obviously have different periods of downtime as you move from places to another. And these small snippets of time are best used in the online format to uh, engage communities by creating some gamifications, by offering some additional insights as to what's taking place on site. And so it's really about really recognizing the different experiences and attention span that people may have, whether they're on site instead of behind the computer. It's a totally different perspective in terms of the, the amount of attention you can provide in these two different locations, because physically on site, you're distracted, you have a much wider view on what's taking place. You have the noise environment as well, uh, which is to be taken into consideration. And so the physical event is a different experience totally versus the um, online experience behind a computer or mobile device. 
Some of the other questions relate more to the virtual event space, which is less of what we focus on. But for example, here, how do we sync up a physical presenter in a virtually created space? So again, it's about breaking down the agenda to small consumable periods of time and allowing the presenter to have these downtimes to really kind of intervene at uh, the right time. Now, the question is not a question that came in. It says interesting platform. So I'm glad to see that it's generating interest, but uh, it's, uh, it's obviously a very versatile platform. There's an additional question coming in here. Very interesting. It says, if attendees are wearing a mask, can the facial recognition checking kiosk recognize them when they arrive physically at the event? Very interesting question. So obviously facial recognition is looking at the facial structure of the attendee and is trying to recognize the person that provided a photo in the first place. So of course, having a mask will impede that process. So on site, what we try and do to improve that system or to guarantee the operation is that when the flow management or the queue management process takes place, we have social distancing markings on the floor, educational digital signage to guarantee that when people approach a physical kiosk that is going to check them in and print a badge, they're the only people who access that space. And so therefore, at that particular time, it's a very easy process to slowly lower the mask for half a second and then put it back on in a safely manner for the facial recognition system to recognize them on the spot and, shink and check their badge. It's a very responsive system that will respond to those um, gestures on site. And again, a queue management system that is well thought through will guarantee a safe process in that context. There we have it. I think I've run through the questions that came in. If any other questions come in, do feel free to uh, reach out to us on our virtual booth. It's still live at this current time. Join me in, that, uh, in those uh, virtual uh, chat rooms. We can have a chat on your specific questions. And thank you again for uh, joining in this presentation today. Back to you. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you, fellow viewers, for your continuous active participation in our Q&A session. Thank you, Pascal, once again for joining us live and entertaining us more on the swift innovation on how we can resume physical events in a safer approach. Appreciate your time and sharing. All basic members are able to visit the first zone of every hall. With premium access, you can roam around all the zones and be in close contact with every exhibitor, of course, with social distancing. Lah. After popping into several booths, you will notice that there are several booth layouts available. And yes, you are right. Different layouts means there are different things for you to discover. A special thanks to all our exhibitors for boldly showing the world new ideas and innovations they have came up with.